Hi everyone, welcome back to Pathfinder Kingmaker. We're here in the capital, Tavern. And we're right at the end of chapter 4. We haven't quite started chapter 5 yet. So I thought I'd do a quick run round of all the companions. See if anything's left. Um, no, everything's done there. Jubilos is here. Okay, I thought he was out in the... Um, Is this about the consequential debates? Can't talk to him. Something else going on. Focus on I'm just out tab and out tab back in again. It worked with them, maybe. What else going on? I can't talk to Jubilost. Hopefully I haven't asked up his um, <laughs> quest line. Let's go upstairs and back down again. Oh no, it's uh, Master the Righteous where what's the name's upstairs. I'll change those here. Talk to her. Speak. I'd like to hear his story. Exile from yes I know. Who are you? You are a judge or something. Why'd you kill? So, um, not one to judge for your past deeds. Jeff family, yes, well, I'm sure we've asked this all before. Asking about death. Tell me where she was born. Okay. What's it like to be undead? Spared from sleep. Carnal pleasures. Tactless and facile question. Pleasures now senses to me as food or wine. An action without feeling. She cringes. Okay. Goddess. Agathoa. Christa. Oh, right. Why is the cult of Agatha forbidden and much of Galarian? Because Galarian is played by never minded cowards. Some tremble at freedom granted by Agatha, others fear the wrath of Phrasma and their priests. <coughs> okay. What happened at the open camp? What was an interesting experience? It seems to be the experience changed you. That's true. Strange, did not think more about who might have killed me. I should crave revenge, but I do not. Time and again, I remember the moment when the power of my gift brought that young elf back from the dead. It was exciting. For the second time in my life, I felt a divine presence. The power of my gift. Power itself. It's, it isn't on life a wonderful blessing. By my own will, I can wrest someone's beauty out of time and into eternity. To preserve them in this world forever. I understand you. There's a frightening beauty in life. The beauty of power. The beauty of being able to ignore the laws. Rule over all living things. <laughs> I'm surprised by how deeply you can see. I should ponder your words. Perhaps they will show me the way. Oops, I haven't asked it. Before racing that elf woman is undead, he said she looked like Nortella. Who is that? It's her daughter. Yeah. She did mention it earlier. I should say the resemblance turned out to be superficial. Norte would, have would not have reacted so cowardly if she rose as undead. I was good enough teacher to raise a strong, restrained, sensible, and able to evaluate her situation before acting. She would have weighed everything thoughtfully rather than imminently pleading for death, or immediately pleading for death. Okay. Thank you for your convo. Dead elf. A living soul in prison, a dead body. This is all I am now. Well, perhaps. He chose his faith for me. I simply must accept it. Shall I put the guilt on me? Okay. 
ありますね。I know the way. Out a chest, but is it worth it? I don't think so. Probably not at this time. Right, let's go and see if I can talk to V plus now. Nope. Doesn't want to talk. Maybe I shouldn't be here yet. Okay, let's go to the main square. Talk to the others. Do a quick roundup before triggering the end of chapter four. Well, how long did I have before the bold hilltop? I haven't checked. Where is it? Can't do that. 192 days, okay. <coughs> I took time. There's Jod. Let's see if he says anything. Fish is not here to talk to him. How may I serve you, Your Grace? Okay. And I didn't check up. White Sander was my only <laughs> counsel. It's not counselor. More for loyalty. Harem's up here somewhere. Somebody up behind here? Spear. Or quarter staff. Plus one. Some extra dosh, I guess. I know the way. Well, Harem was up here. Well, there he is. You're not too happy about seeing your kin, are you? I've always talked to him about this. He fiddles with his beard pensively. Well, it's not as if I'm holding a grudge against the whole dwarven race. In Brevoy, River Kingdoms, and the Stolen Lands, I'm always rather happy to see one of us. Exiles like me, or those who've left their homeland voluntarily in search of a better life, or even those who were born here and never seen the mountains. I hold nothing against them. But Siega, or Siegega, whatever his name is, you see, they aren't just dwarves, they're envoys from my homeland, and tall like himself. Like everyone who exiled me, who humiliated me, everyone I left behind, all of them have come back to torture me. They carried the spirit of the Five Kings Mountains with them, a spirit that has more nauseating to me than the stench of a corpse. No, fair enough. Should drive these back to the mountains? Don't. I would enjoy seeing those smug Shega, led by Tolak's servant, Shea. It's like a Swedish, Danish. Uh, dig themselves a grave with their own hands and line it. That's probably petty of me. What's the difference who dies early or later? The same end awaits us all. But please allow it be the small pleasure. See if the divine gift of the touch of the Unmaker. I've never heard of any such thing. But you saw with your own eyes what happened. The Paladin's words had a ring of truth. What could this mean for me? Who gave me this gift? Gorag or Grotus? And for what purpose? What shall I do with it? Questions keep rushing to my mind. Countless. Everything is so confusing, so strange and inconceivable. Hammond's speech turns into barely understandable mumbling. Just like mine. Okay. Seems sorted out for the moment. Oh, should go and see the sisters as well. Follow my Let's talk to this couple. Tavia. Do you regret letting Janus escape? No. Oh, or maybe just a bit, of course. It's bad that he's free and able to keep hurting people. But to sacrifice people dying in front of you just to save the people Janus might hurt in the future. That would be insane. 
Get me revenge, just for the sake of getting revenge. No, not at that price. Thank you for supporting me when I needed it. I was one small step away from leaving them behind to chase Janush. Um, nothing to thank me for. You're the one who made the right call. Oh no. You have no more much, no idea how much I was seething on the inside. You actually wanted me to chase after him. I almost did. Okay, I'm sure we had the conversation before. There we can go. Do you think we did the right thing, letting Janosh escape? Sure. It's a shame. I've jumped to smash him across the wall. And he slipped right out of my hands. But you know, Octavia, you're right. Leaving those looters to burn, only an animal could do that. Maybe some of those we saved will get to Janosh's throat. A boy can dream, eh? Octavia's also sought my conscience. And now you too. That's fine. I've never, ha never had one of my own. So when do you let anyone make decisions for you? Kidding, kidding. Seriously, everything is in its, everything in its time. <laughs> Sometimes you need to decide everything and listen to no one, no matter how much they try to persuade you. Sometimes it's better to listen to friends you trust. Sometimes the best plan is just to make decisions on the fly. Just do whatever. Okay. Go down and talk to the sisters and Sweet Teeth, see if anything's changed there. Our soul and seasons. Okay, any tasks? Oh yeah, the linen grave. It's in terrible condition. I'll show the bones to a shine. Linen bombs, that's great. Can we take a few souvenirs? Shame on you. The Baroness trusted us with her bones, and you're not going to steal them. Don't you worry, Grace. We'll take care of your bones. They'll be shiny as new. Grabbing the travel bags, the young tieflings run away. Okay, so that was something new. And what did the sisters have to say? Um, spend some time together. Sooner or later, you and I will just burn this house to the ground. And heat of passion. Yeah, of course. It takes mystery, strength, and passion. So we've never had that before. I think. Yep, nothing new. Hey. Alright, down to knock knock then, I guess. One of Jupe lost. Yeah, do not knock. Jupe lost. And go into the throne room. See if not knock's got anything to say about being a hero. Nope, not yet. I've got to meet him in the um, throne room though. That was one of the things. I still haven't looked at those shards of a melted ring either. To see which one I'm missing. Yet to see him there, background. No, nothing new there. Okay, so nothing really new. Maybe from Harim. Maybe from Jaythal. But everybody else was pretty old. Ekin. We've got Ekin, it's just here. I think as soon as I walk into there, it's going to trigger meetings and stuff. Uh, nothing. Okay. I saw old Dory, Grace. Give my intrusion. We have a matter that demands your urgent attention. Right now, Anamid Balavara, the bard from Pitax, is singing in the middle of our main square, and the songs are seditious to say the least. Didn't we have her singing in earlier? 
Or was that in Barnhold she was singing? I know it was here. Or the, quote, riot, unquote. That's how we turn square. And she's going to say she's just telling the truth or something. Slow action walk. Charming bard from Pitax stands before you with a lute in her hand, surrounded by a crowd of, of the capital citizens. In a moment she notices you and blows you a kiss. Yeah, because there was like a big crowd, weren't there? They were cheering before. What's going on? She gives you a warm smile. Your Grace, you're so preoccupied with matters of war and state, that someone has to think about spiritual matters as well. None of the river kingdoms can match Pitax in the fields of art. Who better than our bars and artists to bring the gift of song to the people of your, this young barony? Lindsay blushes. Maestro Balavara, so I have to see you here, but why are your songs so cruel? Our charming Anamide might wish to tell the baroness what kind of so called art she's chosen to entertain her subjects with. Her first song she praised King Erevetti. The second song was about a certain lady from Westhoff who fostered a street pup, dressed it in lace and velvet, and trained it to mimic the manners of court. I find these illusions inappropriate and offensive. So the um, certain lady from Restov would be the uh, Jamandi Aldoi, who sent us here, and we would be the street pup. Now nah, bars can sing whatever they like, you can't punish them for that. It gives you a graceful bow. Those are the words of a true ruler with grace. You should visit the Rushlight Tournament in Pitax and see for yourself what freedom and esteem our bars enjoy in my homeland. Of course, your subjects will be able to prove themselves in various competitions. I guess we're taking Lindsay for that. What's this Rushlight Tournament? I actually not know. It's one of the greatest Pitaxian traditions. Once every few years, the king announces the date of the tournament. We get guests from all around the River Kingdoms on the banks of the Rushlight River. The whole day of the tournament is full of mirth and spirit of competition. Everyone's a chance to prove themselves. Fighters, archers, singers, storytellers and even fans of strong drinks. The drinking competition is an important part of the programme. It would be a pleasure to visit this tournament. King Elvati would be happy to hear this. It's here in Pitex then, Your Grace. The bard gives you a teasing glance from under her eyelashes, and then she bows and leaves. Okay, that's another quest to do then. But no, I'm just here. Just but oh, well, Lindsay's in here anyway. We have to talk to her and the storyteller. And got all the relics out of the chest and see if we can hand anything into him. Lots of talky talk this episode, I think. Grace, we need to head to Revo immediately. So Lord Jamandi requires your help in fight of a sudden attack on Rosland. A treacherous invasion of Barbarians has caught the Sword Lords off guard. It is presently only skirmishes, but very soon there will be a major battle up in the Glenavon Uplands. Rest of us calling for help, I trust you won't turn your back on your old allies when they need your aid more than ever. There's one more thing. I'm afraid the bloom is back, Your Grace. Monsters have started to in the bounty again. Fortunately, they were spotted only near Candlemere Lake. Of course, this is highly disturbing, but, my Baroness, without immediate action on our part, the Sword Lords may be defeated. What's gone on in Candlemere? Not long ago, a bright flash was spotted on the centre of the island. But we left that guy with the, um... He said he was going to look after the portal. After that, monsters started to appear in the area, attacking fishermen and travellers. Someone should travel to Candlemere and discover where this monster is coming from and why. What's happening, Broadway? Just told us. The Killers Barbarians, you grace. The Tiger Lords tribe. Well, we've just helped them. Well, ish, help them. They sometimes serve as mercenaries in the River Kingdoms. Not long ago, a new chieftain rose among them. Um, Armag, that's right. They inspired the tribe to conquer new lands. His name is Armag the Twice Born. They set his tribe on him as a living legend. Looks like Brevoy became his first target. Rossland, to be more specific. Flintlock Grassland, okay. 
The movie raises her head, otherwise plays in Tiger Laws. So they decided to come to fight. I've heard my former tribe is with them now, hiding from the evil spirits that haunts them. I bet the Tiger Laws brought the cowardly worms here with them. If so, I'll give them what they deserve. She shakes her head as trying to cast off something unpleasant, then glares at you. But her words are carefully controlled. What I want to say, chieftain. We need to go there, and we need to hurry. I'm going out to scout around. Maybe find someone to help. Come with me. Or else we'll see it. we'll live to see this armor smash the brevens from knocking at our main gate. Ugh. Yeah, let's go there. The movie raises her hands as if trying to stop you. I said yes, guys. Right now. If we go there in a huge group, there's no way we can scout or notice. In short, I go first to see the numbers, maybe smash several heads. You come and join me later, she grins. Does not make me wait too long. I'll kick all the asses without you. Which one should I do first? Or in Brevo, of course. The lady demands you to quest is pressing. The future of Rosalind and the Sword Lords depends on you. Okay. That's all bounce his head for you. One last thing, Grace. Now, in this darkest hour, I must hurry to tell my countrymen. I'm heading to Rosalind immediately to join the Sword Lords. Hope we meet again. And in this world. So I mean he's leaving, he's leaving. What's his name's buggered off? Is that Bakken? That was Jod. Your Grace. The goblin, the one you found, has asked to see you. He claims you're in need of training. I think he's rather in need of a bath. Several. I hear what he has to say. Send him in. Come on, knock knock. Knock knock strides in, as best as his short legs can manage. Then his gait slows, then he stops as he takes in the throne room. His eyes and ears swivel independently, as if trying to take it every direction in at once. After scanning the area around him, he looks upward and squints, as if uncertain if there's a ceiling above him or not. He stands still, swelling slightly, eyes are fixed on the ceiling. Others in the throne room are disdainfully silent. Some wrinkle their nerves and take a step back. Some of the guards' hands fall to the hilt of their blades. Not Knock's head snaps down, then seeing you gives you a sickle grim, his eyes gleaming, side kick. I almost didn't see you amongst all the long shanks. He frowns at your throne and cocks his head confused. Why in my chair? What? There's a light chuckle from someone in the room, quickly silenced. It took a while to find the way here. Not Knock glances around. And now here that to take rightful place. Be a hero. I'll show you how to be a hero. He nods sharply and hooks his fingers into his belt. I can help. Like before, side by side, big hero, he plays himself. And not big hero, he pauses. You need it. How can you help? George frowns, actually, Grace, if you're considering accepting assistance assistance from this, this. Knock knock. Knock knock raps on the ground with his heel twice for emphasis, then winces. George frown deepens. If this knock knock truly wishes to be of help, and as one goblins might listen to, the sightings of goblins near Olex, possibly dispossessed by our recent encounter. Massacre, not not correctly, but corrects brightly. Chop them all up except for those who ran fast. New tribe probably have very long legs, very hard to catch. His eyes are light and he grins, but not for me. I can round them up. But he frowns again. But unless they're still, they're, they're still, they're still being chased. It's not like them to keep moving. Time's run out. They'd better stay in the capital, like not knock, even if he wrinkles his nose. It smelled bad here. Ah, yes. Oh, like I sent word of these goblins via courier. He's been reluctant to leave in case they raid the post in his absence. Only they've been quite diligent in trying to raid his storeroom. Your goblin ally could deal with them. Very well, we'll travel to Oleg soon. Not knock nods and pauses as he sees you when he's seated. Do we go now? It may be wise if I shepherded or uh, accompanied you. Not knock nod standing proudly. Makes what might be a ragged salute interrupted by him noticing something on his wrist, which he rubs away the frown. As you command, as a, as a hero, but he rubs his wrist again, then grunts. We'll go. Lead to post, not knock follow.
That's bargain. Potion of bark skin. Okay, thanks, Barkin. What are you working on? Blah, uh, blah, blah. Special eggs. Okay, you go. So, those bark skin potions not bad. That's how long it lasts. Brask? No, it's Shirel. Clearly, bows to be in the palace. He shuffles his feet and bows shyly. Greetings, Grace. Here, I bought you something. Warm embrace. Thank you. He blushes and battles hurriedly. Oh, about Morlan. Reported his crimes to the guards. No, someone must have warned him. He escaped. He has eyes and ears everywhere. I'm afraid your personal warden is the only one who can find him. Shirel is shaking my righteous anger. I pray to Torag not to let him make more mischief before the guards find him. I pray you don't like let him go unpunished. Okay. Tovel. Before you is the boyish half elf. Her tight fitting leather outfit is full of patches. A large, mean looking blade rests on her hip. A tattoo adorns the woman's neck. A half of the simple folk of Arnold. I greet you. My name is Tervel. Do we recognise her from the DLC? I'm here to represent our community. To present you with a token of our loyalty to humbly beg for your help. Barney Bell. She runs, hands a wrapped parcel to you. I personally vouch for its quality and made it with my own hands. Every stitch and cut. I hope you like it. Tervel proudly hands over her gift and continues in a steady tone. We ask you to let Varnhold assemble a militia of her own. Many of the locals are eager to keep watch and defend their homes with weapons in their hands, especially so after the... well, you understand. Your Grace took care to send guards to Varnhold, and I am grateful for that. However, the townsfolk would sleep better knowing that he let us take the protection of our children and elders into our own hands. I understand this required investment from you, but we'll be happy, but we will not remain in your debt for long. If there's a workshop where I can work leather, I'd be more than happy to make all the manner of things for you. I used to make a living as a tanner back in Dagamar. Tell me about your idea. I tried to keep it short. But I, but, uh, I come from a, lo a long way from here. Come from a long way from here, okay. Dagamar, that is. We never had too much in the way of law. We always had order. It just wasn't the guard that looked after it. It was the local bandits. Every village, every quarter, they all had a gang of their own. I never saw it to anyone except other gangsters that came by. They were just like the guard, you see, even though no one ever gave them any authority. If you don't have authority, you carry a blade. Well, then you're a bandit. You sent your guard to Varnhold, but firstly, they're strangers here. Second, they're not your best people. Think about it. Who would ever want to get posted all the way down here? So that's why there were so many guards there and so little order. As for us, we know what we know the people we're dealing with. We can tell the real thug from the harmless drunk who likes to tie one arm and wave his fists around. Who to watch because he's a dangerous fool and who to watch because he's an eager fool. Long story short, we've got our ways. That's why I'm asking for your permission and your help. We want to bring a few brave and quick-witted fools together and do everything by the book. All manner of leather things. The half elf livens up. Oh yes, I'm a master leather worker after all. I my boots, I make it all. Just gotta find a proper place to practice my craft. If you help me with that, I can work for you. But only if you satisfy my request, help us organize a militia. I like this idea. Let's see whether I can make it happen. Thank you, Grace. I hope to hear from you soon. Meanwhile. Barbarian hordes had been gathering near Brevoy's borders. We had a difficult choice to make. Was it more important to chase a traitor or to fulfill our duty as allies? Well, there's a maybe. There's um, Lindsay. There's Regengar and Octavia. Don't know who that is. Maybe the player character. Guess that's chapter five. It's got a tick in that slip to grasp. Betrayer's flight, okay. Explore candle mere bloom.
Ready for anything. And Glenabon was miles away. Sell that. There's a lot of things coming in now. Take these leather scraps. This itchy. I go on letter. Okay. Still missing one of these, I think. Urgents, where you go? What's milk doing there? It must have come from someone. More leather. Sky metal. Oh, that's the um Route. That's from Tenebrous Depths. Looks like that is as well. That is Night Spaces. Tenebrous Depths. Toll and stuff. Tenebrous Depths, Time Worn, Time Worn. I'll see if these do anything, the time-worn stuff. Okay. Let's go and talk to the storyteller, and then Lindsay. Okay, Dryad, Cyclops coins. Blind darkness underground, bronze blades clashing, the cold blood of serpent folk and the hot blood of cyclops mingle on the stone floor, and something else. Fear, desperation, agonizing shame. The owner of this piece is, was not to be envied. Give me the items you collected, I'll tell the story of the fallen soldier. Okay. Saddle of horses nigh and stomp the hooves, they cannot wait to travel distant lands, searching for the legendary treasures of an ancient empire. I feel the bravery of the previous owner, perhaps she dreamt of adventure and fame, do you wish to know where path led her? I certainly do. To find the rest of our five belongings, together we can uncover the story. Search for the gemstone cave. This is strange, I feel the traces of rune magic of Thassilon. Heavy spells of Cyclops, precise wizardry of Aslant, and the fresh wind of Elven spells, all combined together. Though it's barely discernible underneath the mould of time. Who would have joined all these things? The owner is shrouded in a thick darkness, blacker than depths. Find all five items, then I hope the secret of the owner will be revealed. Okay. What about the fallen soldier? Ten grand. That's the fallen stuff. Okay, I feel the cold damp of a dungeon, weapons clinking. I smell blood and soldiers' foot cloth. There's a dull pain in my muscles and a weariness, an endless weariness on the verge of desperation. I'm a Cyclops, a soldier of the 19th unbending legion of the Golgan Empire. We travel the Darklands, the mission will clear in the middle le levels of the southwest sector of Serpentville. For the course of the mission, we've lost a third of our contingent, our rations run low, and our morale lower. The Golgan Empire... Um, I've got no idea where any of these names are, what it is. Okay. I've heard several soldiers secretly tell each other they've lost any hope of returning home. I stand strong. I will endure whatever I must to return home alive, for the sake of my wife and child. But each new march, each new battle dims the thought that I will ever see them again. I pray for their son's protection and guidance. But can the great luminary even hear me down here? Golgan. I thought the Cyclops' empire was called Coloran. 
Hello, Anne. Never heard of it. The storyteller's face twitches and his normal voice returns. Olivan was founded by the Golgan refugees several centuries later. As for why there were refugees at all, well, we will learn that soon enough. The storyteller's face relaxes again as he returns to the story. How long have you been on your mission? Off from the sun and moon, we count time by daily marches. I've lost track completely. It feels like we spent an eternity in this underground hell. Could it be that when I return, my son will be a grey and old man, the sons of his own, and then sons themselves. No, I must avoid these venomous thoughts. Do you worship the sun? Yes, of course. Do you know what raises Cyclops above the animals and other two-legged savages? The Cyclops face has one eye, a single orb, just like the sun in the sky during our day, or the moon at night. We build majestic temples to praise the luminaries, and in return they reward us with prophetic visions. The lesser races may roam in the dark, but the Cyclops are capable of seeing truth. Why do you wage war against the serpent folk? By order of our Empress, Selecti Nevados. Nevados, she was awake then, is she? With her own hands, she destroyed their den near Garakatoa, or Garkatoa, and beheaded their leader. The Darklands will be ours soon. Maybe once we've purged it of serpent folk, we can find a way to bring some sunlight down here. Go on. Our mission continues. We've lost half our contingent, but we still have no orders to turn back. The soldier's desperation has become an open indignation. We were outside in the situation and convinced half the unit would have deserted by now. But here we are, and there's nowhere to run. I listen to the soldiers talking. I don't like what I hear. This underground hell has changed them. They don't look like look to the luminaries for help anymore. Rumour has it that some of them being secretly become praying to the serpent folk's gods. Worse than barbarianism. This is pure insanity. This wasn't the mission itself. But wasn't this mission itself insane in hindsight? What beings do the serpent folk worship? I don't know. I don't wish to. Who could possibly be worthy of worshipping these fetid catacombs where sunlight can never reach? Devils or demons, if I had to guess. You've seen some of the unholy shrines. They were enough to make even the seasoned veterans sick. Flayed skins, bowls of blood and entrails, altars made of bones, and this done to their own kin, to other serpent folk. Can't imagine what they do to the captives. Did you kill many serpent folk? I think so. I don't know the exact numbers. That filth doesn't practice honest combat. They move through secret passages to ambushes, attacking from behind, or above, or below. We've decimated many of their nests, but still they keep coming. The Legion rebelled. An officer caught some of the soldiers often sacrificed to the serpent folk's gods, and he ordered them arrested and executed. We had no idea how deep the contagion had spread. Many soldiers refused to follow his orders. The group stood facing each other, swords bar beard, loyalists against traitors. I shall stand by my commanding officer, die beside him as a loyal soldier of the Empire. I'm scared. Oh son, I'm so scared. I don't want to die here on the ground. I want to see my wife and my son again. I couldn't say a single word. I couldn't even move while they butchered our commanding officer and the soldiers who remained loyal to him. But what they couldn't save me from. But that couldn't save me from what happened next. They declared the slain as sacrifices to the serpent folk's gods, and each of us had to taste the flesh of the sacrificed, or share in their fate. Salty blood runs down my lips. I choke down slimy meat and clap my hands to my mouth, keep myself from puking. Sun and moon can't help us here, and I raise my prayer to new gods. My legs won't hold me, so I kneel, and I'll feel them. I feel the here with me. They stand around me, the cold palms on my forehead, and my fear subsides. I return home. Isn't that what I was praying for? Won't you end up executed for treason? Not if they never learn of it. We all agreed on the story we tell our commanders when we returned. Our operation was successful. The legion suffered heavy losses. The commanding officer was killed in the action. So the next in command took his place and ordered us to head back. We did. That's all. Do you still sacrifice Cyclops? Just once or twice. Now we try to capture serpent folk alive and sacrifice them instead. We even developed a taste for snake meat. The underground gods turned away from that scum with their new followers are far superior. Such power and the glory the new gods can bring to the Empire. 
You could even challenge Aslan himself. Go on. On the upper levels, we rejoined the main force of our army. We reported the cleansing operation as a success. No one doubted our story of the officer's glorious depth, death. Not that I'm surprised. It seems our legion wasn't the only one to accept the protection of the underground gods. Some soldiers even prayed to them openly. Now superiors turn a blind eye to it. Finally, we make it back to the surface. I breathe fresh air deep into my lungs. Like a crimson eye, a huge ball of light glares down on me from the sky. I shut my eye. I'm no longer used. I'm no longer used to sunlight. Tears run down my face. No matter. It's all right. I'll be home soon. I must thank the gods for my safe return. Maybe my son will make a good sacrifice. What happened to Golgan after that? As so often happens, while the serpent folk may have lost the war with the Cyclops, they won victory over their souls. Soon, dark cults spread throughout the Golgan Empire, replacing the traditional worship of celestial deities. Sacrifice of Cyclops, public torches, and ritual cannibalism became commonplace. The Empire began to decay. How was Coloran founded? Seeing the Empire dying, some Cyclops fled to what is now known as Iberia. They hoped to preserve the culture of the old Golgam, to build a new country free of the dark cults. But, as before, the contagion was really too deep. Coloran proved to be just a lesser copy of Golgam, and then the Earthfall came. Skies have fallen down, ending the Cyclops' civilization, along with so many others. Thank you for the story. Okay. So, that didn't get rid of much, did it? I've still got... What, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 12, 14 of those. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 11 of those. 10 of those. And the Talden stuff. I need diamond dust. Keep hearing noises again. I'll go ahead. How did I get seven burn? How the hell did I get seven burn? I haven't done anything. All according to plan. Omegas here as well, okay. Let's put all this back. Okay, let's leave that. Still got a long way to go. I just want to talk to my Gavan. Grace, welcome back. How can I serve you? How did you find the capital? It's impressive. Still, sometimes I just miss the open spaces of Dunswood. How were things in Varnhold? Excellent, Grace. Everything is excellent. Sure, when everyone returned home, they were a bit uncomfortable. But after appointing a deputy in Dublin the Guards, the citizens began to calm down, and life started to return to normal. He hesitates, then finally says, You saved us all, Grace. I'll never be able to thank you enough for all that. Although... All I can do is serve you faithfully and ensure your efforts weren't in vain. Von Hold will stand strong no matter what. This I promise you. Have you taken care of Von Hold's defences? The people have already reconstructed the fort walls, they even started digging a moat around the town, organising patrols. The event was a real shock to everyone. Now every citizen of Von Hold, young or old, has been doing everything in their power to never be caught off guard again. Do you remember anything from when your soul was imprisoned? He freezes. Not sure, Your Grace. He frowns. It was dark. Almost no space. He closes his eyes and gulps. If you don't mind, I'd rather not recall any more. In your room, I discovered the letter containing threats. Is there something you'd like to discuss with me? His face darkens. I didn't want you to know about that. I wanted to spare you from any further worries. I began receiving letters like that. One since about when I sent you some trading goods. Once my man even interrogated the trader who delivered the mail, but nothing came of it. I have some assumptions of who's behind it, 
So as long as I have no proof, I don't want to accuse anyone. How did Germandy react when Von Hold joined my barony? To a blunt your grace, who cares? Maybe she's angry back in Restoff, frightened her head off, or even celebrated. Matters not. The issue has already been settled between the two of us. I think about offering you an official position. In what way could you help me govern the country? I can't say ruling the barrel needs to be giving me much joy. A far more enjoyable pursuits. But there's something I was really excelled at. There was managing the treasury. If I hadn't been there, our citizens would have, fight, would have had to tighten their belts. Okay, you could be a treasurer. Okay. Where is Lindsay? She's here. Um, no, nothing about the um, oh, bollocks. Let's just finish these off then. It's just by talking to people. There's nothing about the um, Uh, there's nothing about... Oh, my brain's gone. Um... Wish liked ornament. That's what I was thinking of. Okay, let's go over to Varnhold. Let's see if it's up here, isn't it, somewhere? Is that it? It's Varnhold, yep. Yeah. And let's put in a teleport circle and a pier. We got up here. Where is it? Where was it? Am I being blind again? Windmore's here. Okay, got up here. Upgrade it. Okay. Oh, a fort. How many BP do I have? Two hundred ninety-six. Okay. Right then. Teleportation circle. I stick that there. And. I can't build the artisan shop yet because I haven't fixed the. What's the name, have we? Espionage, because well, it's random, though, isn't it? Okay. It's an in boundary trade shop. Just more community and that looks town hall. Let's see, this is a town. Okay, so upgrade my capital to a city then. Sure, we should do it here sometimes. Just go upgrade. Upgrade. I can't. Buy a city. Maybe I've got to do the turn into a city uh, project. Anyway, thanks for watching. It's been 49 minutes. Next episode, I will check up the advisors and I see why the only person with the counselor is Sana. And I'll also check up. I have missed parts of the leather and the ring. Make a note somewhere. Notepad or something. And that will be in between. So you'd have to watch me going back and forth in all the bloody shops. Um, so I'll save that here. Okay. 
but whatever. And um, next episode, carrying on into chapter five. Twice-born warlord. Hope to see you then. Bye for now.